All right, we're here in Perth. Let's see. <laughs> a good turnout. Here we are in Perth. It's terrible, isn't it? I know. No. It is, isn't it? 1984 is here. <laughs> Break it up, nothing to see. Break it up. Well, let's have a little poetry. I had written him a letter which I had for want of better knowledge sent to where I met him down the Lachlan years ago. He was cheering when I knew him, so I sent the letter to him just on spec and dressed as follows. Fancy of the overflow. And an answer came directed in a writing unexpected. Oh, and I think the same was written with a thumbnail dipped in tar. It was his cheering mate who wrote it, and for a mate of mine will quote Fancy's gone to Queensland droving, and we don't know where he are. In my wild, erratic fancy, visions come to me in fancy. Gone groving down the future where the western groves go. As the stock are slowly stringing, Clancy rides behind them singing. For a drover's life has pleasures that the townsfolk never know. And the bush has friends to meet him, and their kindly voices greet him in the murmur of the breezes and the river on its bars. And he sees the vision splendid of the sunlit plains extended, and at night the wondrous glory of the everlasting stars. I am sitting in my dingy little office where it's stingy. Ray of sunlight struggles feebly down between the houses tall, and the fetid air and gritty of the dusty, dirty city, through the open window floating, spreads its foulness over all. And in place of lowing cattle, I can hear the fiendish rattle of the tramways and the buses making hurry down the street, and the language uninviting of the gutter children fighting comes fitfully and faintly through the ceaseless tramp of feet and the hurrying people daunt me and their pallid faces haunt me as they shoulder one another in their rush of nervous haste with their eager eyes and greedy and their stunted forms and weedy for townsfolk have no time to grow they have no time to waste and I somehow rather fancy that I'd like to change with fancy 
like to take my turn at roving where the seasons come and go. But he takes the round eternal of the cat book and the journal. So I doubt he's through the office. Fancy of the overflow. Thank you, Banjo. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you a story, but it's a little story. When Herbie was a younger man, the money paid him fine, selling beef to feed the workers at the local uranium mine. <laughs> the mine was worked on Herbie's place for nearly 15 years, and Herbie owned a pub where miners bought each other beer. They closed the mine, so Herbie wrote to the United Nations demanding compensation for his nuclear mutations. I just tell you what's in the world. Thank you, buddy. He illustrated his remarks with photographic evidence. Yes, scientific fellas better take a Captain Cook. Them four drumsticks in the photo came from just one single chook. Here's a 24-inch cockroach to keep knocking off the tree. And Cavendish bananas growing on me mango tree. Here's me pair of lovebirds to keep it on the ground and me five best garden pools to the lot of all interest in the cow. Them radioactive tree stumps cause the most unpleasant itch and that black albino wombat was born to me Kelpie bitch. <laughs> a youthful wife has aged so much she's looking like her mother. My elder sister Harriet is now my youngest brother. Yeah. <laughs> and approve these radiations change the natural condition. The local member has become an honest politician. And I saw that politician <laughs> declaiming on TV how our country marsupials soon extinct will be. He reckoned each Australian very soon had order stop wiping out the kangaroos and subjecting them to slaughter. How wrong, she says, is raising sheep to eat up all the grass. The starvation of our kangaroos will surely come to pass. And selfish folks are breeding cows to devastate the land. To abolish livestock raising, that would be something grand. Shooting endangered species is a very rotten habit. It's just like using viruses to kill the native rabbit. Those rushing motor vehicles give the kangaroos a fright. Coppers all should be banned from driving cars at night. Yeah. <laughs> they shed, said we should eat soya beans instead of kangaroo stew. And eating our natural symbols is the worst thing we could do. To emulate the English is a crime I could not bear. They've eaten all the lions and unicorns over there. <laughs> now any copper who didn't laugh is, is actually not real, he's a clone. He's an imposter, he is an absolute imposter. Anyway, the nice fellow, that was very good, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, nice. oh, nice. Here comes Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're right. 